Welcome to Darkroom for Mac, the extremely clean, simple and easy to use photo editing app for Mac OS by indie developer Bergen Co. One of the reasons it's so clean and simple is because it's actually built from the same source code as the iOS version, meaning it was initially designed for smaller touch-based interfaces and then ported to the Mac. This is the grid view and this is the editor. Your library is on the left and your editing tools are on the right. And that's it. That's the entire app. Extremely similar to the iOS version with a few tweaks to help it fit right in on macOS Big Sur. Now Darkroom is an Apple Design Award winning app and it is indeed a sign of great design when your app works and scales across multiple different platforms without any significant changes. But on a platform where the most popular editing apps have complex interfaces and dozens of sliders and drop down menus full of options, who is Darkroom for? And could it actually be too simple, too basic? for the Mac platform. Let's take a look at SQL Mail style. Just like the iOS version, Darkroom for Mac works directly with your Photos library. Whatever happens in your Photos library will happen in Darkroom. So if you import some photos into your Photos library, they'll also import into Darkroom and vice versa. This includes raw files, depth photos, live photos, and videos. This means that if you're an iPhone photographer and you've fully embraced the iCloud lifestyle, then whatever you've taken on your iPhone will be waiting for you automatically on your Mac, which is great. No importing, no copying or moving files around. And when you're ready to edit a photo, just click on it and Darkroom will download it from iCloud and off you go. This works really well for me as a photographer who these days takes 99% of my photos with my iPhone. With photos on SD cards and other drives, just press the I key, find them and import them. So getting your photos into Darkroom couldn't be easier. And once they're here, organizing them and working with them is a breeze as well. But this isn't just because of the simple interface. A major factor in Darkroom's productivity is its keyboard shortcuts. Almost every function has its own shortcut. You can easily import photos, organize them into albums, quickly whiz around the app, navigate between your photos, bring up the tools you want, copy and paste edits, export, and there's also touch bar support. So let's run through the editing tools themselves. Pressing three on the keyboard, we have the main adjustment sliders for things like exposure, highlights, contrast, etc. And down here, we have split toning. Videos get the same sliders, which is cool. And with your depth mode photos, you can split your edits between the foreground and the background, which can really give your portraits an extra dimension. Moving on, we can press four to access the RGB curves panel, where you can adjust all three color channels. And finally, you've got your HSL sliders, hue, saturation, and luminance with a nice color histogram. And Darkroom is full of little things and nice touches that you may not even notice, but you would miss if they weren't there. Like the subtle use of color in the RGB curves and HSL sliders to help you. And down here, you have your complete editing history, so you can go back in time to any point. You can also hold the backslash key to quickly toggle on and off, and you can press R to revert back to the original completely. And that is all of the editing tools. So yes, Darkroom doesn't have the most tools in the world, but I think it offers the right tools to achieve that balance between simplicity and functionality. So for beginners who are learning and for more advanced or pro users who want a clean user interface, there should be enough here for you to achieve the vast majority of edits that you want to make and the looks that you want to achieve for your photos. Personally, it has everything that I need for the kind of photography that I do at the moment. The only things I would like are perhaps a proper white balance slider for raw photos. And I sometimes wish there was a mid-tone contrast slider, better known as clarity, just to add that extra bit of pop into the mid-tones, especially in these winter and autumn photos that have a lot of textures, especially in the mid-tones. As you can see, there is a lot of space here on the Mac. So Bergen Co could add extra functionality without clogging up the interface and going against their principles.
Once you've finished editing, you can save your edits as a filter so you can instantly apply them in the future. You get a lot of filters built in as well, and most of them seem to be based on old film stock. And they can offer a good starting point for an edit or even a one-click editing solution, especially with JPEG files. Most of the time, I press Command-C to copy the edits I've just made, go to the next photo, paste them, and go from there. You can also select a bunch of photos and paste edits onto them all at once. You can then export to your file system, you can save a copy to your Photos app, or you can modify the original. And because Darkroom's edits are made non-destructively, even if you choose to modify the original when you export, you can always revert it back later if you want. Modifying the original is a great option for those who operate primarily out of their iPhone's camera roll because you can easily upload straight to apps like Instagram without having to airdrop over to your iPhone. And on the Mac itself, you can upload directly to websites, which I do when I make my thumbnails in Canva and when I upload to my own website, physicalmail.com. Modifying the original on the Mac will also cause Darkroom to retrieve your edits on your iOS devices. Sometimes it happens immediately, sometimes it takes a few minutes, sometimes it can take longer, sometimes Darkroom needs prompting to do it, uh, but it will happen eventually. But if I modify the original on my iPhone and my iPad, nothing happens on the Mac. So I'm not sure what's happening there, but at least I know that if I start editing on my Mac, then I can pick up later on on one of my iOS devices. Something that won't sync across any of your devices though are the filters, but you can back them up and then restore them. So if I create a new filter or change one on the Mac, then I can back them up and then pick up one of my other iOS devices and restore them to keep them updated. Now somewhere Darkroom can't help me at all is with archiving my RAW files. I save all of my iPhone's RAW files to iCloud and to my external hard drive. And I have to export them in the Photos app itself because Darkroom doesn't give me any way to export the DNGs. Although there is this share original option that I found, but Whenever I click it, it's always greyed out. So I don't know what's happening there. Perhaps I'm using it wrong. When it comes to performance and stability, Darkroom is only 14 megabytes on the disk. So I thought it would run like a dream on both my M1 MacBook Pro and my Intel based MacBook Pro, both running the latest version of Big Sur. But I thought wrong. On my poor Intel MacBook Pro, Darkroom has been highly unstable and inconsistent. Sometimes it crashes every couple of minutes, sometimes it crashes every 15 minutes. All I know for sure is that it is going to crash at some point, especially when I'm moving between photos. That seems to be the main trigger for a crash. On my M1 MacBook Pro, it was running a hell of a lot better. It's still crashing occasionally, but nowhere near the amount it would on the Intel based Mac. But then all of a sudden, it too became highly unstable and started to crash a lot. Interestingly, when I opened Darkroom with Rosetta 2 on the M1 Mac, it became a lot more stable. But I'm not sure why this happened, because Rosetta 2 is a translation software that allows Intel apps to run on M1 Macs. But because Darkroom is a universal app written to run natively on both Intel and M1, it shouldn't have made any difference. Now Darkroom is free, but you don't get the RGB curves, the HSL sliders or video editing. As literally all of my edits revolve around the RGB curves and the HSL sliders, then the free version wouldn't be appropriate for me. Now I'm not sure what a lot of these prices mean, but for me, the best value is the £19.49 a year option because that gives you Darkroom on all of your devices. And if you do subscribe, then you can share your subscription with your family, which is really cool if you have other photographers in your family. You can get everything forever with £138 payment. And again, that gives you Darkroom on all of your devices. Now, apart from the stability issues and the glitches, I have really enjoyed using Darkroom since I installed it on the 12th of November. As an Adobe Lightroom user, it has been really refreshing to completely throw myself into another editing app on the Mac, especially one that's so clean and doesn't have me wondering, like, am I missing something here in one of these menus? I've recently come up against this um, in Adobe Lightroom Mobile and I really don't want to upgrade my plan. I certainly don't think Adobe will mind. I mean, they're doing all right. 
And if you are thinking of trying a new editing app, then you have to completely throw yourself into it over a few weeks. You can't just dip in and out because every editing app has its own workflow. And some people may not realize, but they have their own interpretation of the adjustments. For example, the exact same edits in Lightroom will look completely different in Darkroom and vice versa. And once you're used to one style, it's very easy to immediately just dismiss other editing apps because the sliders don't produce the same results as you're used to. So I think a big part of choosing the right editing app for you is finding one where the edits complement your photography and your shooting style. For example, I can easily tell when I've edited a photo in Lightroom or in Darkroom, and not just because I was the one who edited the photo, but because they have different looks. The name Darkroom is certainly appropriate because it really does lend itself to edits that have more of like an old fashioned like vintage film look. So I think this look really complements like the style of photos that I want to make. And another reason I've really enjoyed using Darkroom is because it's not like a cockpit of menus and sliders. I love the fact that I use 95% of its functionality on every single photo and there's not like hundreds of other options and menus there just not being used. But Darkroom's style, its workflow and its interface definitely aren't for everyone. For example, when I was working for with marketing departments or when I was traveling all over the world as a photographer, then Darkroom wouldn't have been appropriate for me because I needed certain tools like certain automations and integration with other apps that Darkroom just doesn't have. And my clients wanted a certain style that Darkroom just doesn't lend itself to very well. But with what I'm doing right now, like I take photos for these YouTube videos, for YouTube thumbnails, uh, for Instagram, for my website and for pleasure. So for those things, Darkroom's tools, its style and its workflow are spot on. And that is my review of Darkroom for Mac. Thank you so much for watching. Happy editing and Aussie Buna.